Hello everybody, we're back with not a whole lot special today, just some more lighter. I was trying to think after yesterday's stream what I could change around, and I think it's just going to be kind of brute force testing a whole bunch of stuff until something sticks, so. We got max speed magbat today, because why not? I was kind of struggling against crystals, and magbat's one of the best crystal counters in the game. It also helps against the Shellant Inky lead, which I oh so despise. It's kind of fun when you run Magma Special, because its physical and special attack are actually the same value. Uh, you can throw Fiery Soul Soul Shout on it, even Magma Cannon if you really want a little bit higher damage of a move. Um, you can get value out of like high priority Charcoal Walls this way too. I'm not sure how it'll work. I've never tried this before, but I had success with Brock last patch. So we're going to try Magmet this time. Just got Sensei Rope for increased damage. And as much as I hate doing it, we're going to give Volfi a try. Pretty, okay, glad I caught that trait change. Uh, just pretty typical Volfi. I have Bush specifically just for target rep. This is really the same team I ran yesterday, just with a couple things swapped around. Until I find what the best slots are for it. But I mean, overall, the, the core feels pretty good. The biggest issue I ran into was I was initially running Tortonite as a great way to deal with toxic types, but it seems like a lot of players are opting for Akronox as their toxic of choice now. Which Akronox not only walls Tortonite, it also just hits it back super effective. So it's a pretty bad matchup. If things stay that way, I may have to look at switching it back around. Right, got a pretty quick queue though. Rumpy. Oh look. An inky shell ant lead. I mean, Magma looks pretty valuable here. We do get to try it out, so that's nice. Bit surprised to see the Amphitheater Band of all things, though. I have quite a few counters to Oshiara. So I think I'll let that one slide for the time being. So I'm looking at magma counters right now. So Turok and Volfi kind of stand out. I'll throw the abandoned Volfi. That also frees up Garyo some more as well. think what I want to do here. So I, I realized just now that my Magma and Volfi are speed tied. So I want to lead both, but I'm trying to figure out what order I want them to be in. The first time you pick will be on the left, and the left one, when two Thames on your, on your side are speed tied, will be the one that goes first. I think I want the Volfi to be the first one. Just in case he was to pick Chimurian. This is still okay, because Magma's not threatened on this board at all. Biggest problem would be that uh, Golzi can get a rage off or something. And I have little in the ways of dealing with it that way. Volorance. I didn't have a whole lot of time to think, but it completely walls Platymus and Gario, and isn't a great matchup for Tortonite either. So if Obi and even Chromian had gotten banned, I would have been in a rough, rough spot. Oh, it also walls Volfi, so it, Volorun completely walls three of my Thames. Uh, I should probably put more priority on banning that next time. 
I just added these two Thames though, so I haven't got to do much experimenting or planning yet. A little surprised to still see the Oshara, but we'll take it. We'll pick these two. Last slot might be Gario, just for the better swap in turn one. Actually, no, swapping in to two melees with a an Earth feels bad, so we're just still gonna go Obi. You know, I don't even need handcuffs on my Volfi. I would probably be just fine if I wanted to throw Drill on it for this better initial matchup. Because throwing a, a Sludge Gift and a Fiery Soul into the Skullsy would probably get really close to killing it, if not just straight up kill it. I want to keep Volfi around for OCR, maybe Turok. I won't need Obi much at all past this lead. I'll just throw the Fiery Soul at Shell Ant, make its damage much less this turn. That doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Fiery Soul is honestly a weak move, but the burn support it provides is nice. really need to get a Sparks on my Magma. It wouldn't be bad because I can uh, save a little stamina with the Invigorized. And also, it's not an immediate threat of dying. I guess it would help against Turok if Turok comes in. I'm just trying to think. I'm pretty sure Obi just dies to an Oshidashi from the Golzi. And I'm not sure if I outspeed. I suppose the the option I have is to just fiery soul to burn it and then still plasma beam. Uh, he does bring in the Turok. I do kind of wish I sparks this turn, or at least hit the shell ant. Plasma Beam on the Shell Ant, and then we'll throw the, the Soul Shell at the Turok there. So it'd have to be a pretty fast Turok to outspeed me. Obi is now trapped and slow, which does kind of suck. Now if he brings in Golzi after the Turok dies here, then I'm not exactly happy to see it. That's pretty good damage though. Both Shaolant and my Magmot are pretty much out of stamina. I'd like to swap out the Magmot, bring it back in for Chimurian later. Yabolo proc helps me give a bit more stamina. Nice. <laughs> a, a plague from Volfi alone will not kill Oshiara. 
It'd be great if I can get the sparks off before Oshiara moves, but I don't think that's going to be a possibility because of the Kessa. I think I still have to stay in and soul shout it though. Yeah. Just so I can threaten it with the plague. Wow, Shalak went for the inner spirit. Now that's a little surprising. I guess he was predicting a swap. So I did go for spec gulp on the magma for mainly this reason. Lots of special threats. Did quite a bit of damage. Uh, I don't have any synergies for Chromion, which is lame. I'm kind of forced to bring a Tort Knight here. Because Golzi was coming in and it has hold off of Oshidashi. Maybe that Marbles proc puts it in range to die to the Crystal Spikes. Can't say for sure. Bringing in Volfi here. Avoid the Cerbatios should he decide to stay in. But he does actually swap out Oshiara. Works for me. I, I mean, Tortnite is a, a toxic type, so had I decided to use Rotten Goo and survived a double in, I, I could kill it. But Goldie does go down. No shower will not last much longer. GG's. GG, yeah, the magma looks like it caught you off guard a bit. <laughs> I don't blame you. I feel like uh, nothing you can do with your team versus that one. I, I think Vol maybe if you picked up Volarend at first, that would have helped. I didn't realize it till afterwards, but Volarend completely walls Volfi, Gario, and Platymus, three of which were my picks, even though I only picked one in the end. I think you banned Platymus, though. So maybe had you picked Volarin, you wouldn't have had to do that. I'm not sure, though. It was definitely a, a rough matchup for you. Here's the, oh, it's aerobic? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and against my full special team, that would have been... <laughs> that would have been rough. <laughs> It's a good showing for the magma, though. Maybe it'll be more useful than I gave it credit for. Normally, if I'm going to throw max speed on something, I want it to outspeed 232. Max speed magma's actually 228, which really isn't a specific breakpoint, so I just decided to drop the speed down to 221, which is the Oshiara breakpoint, save a few points for stamina and special attack. Uh, team's not really consistent, struggles a lot. The only way you win is if you make really good predictions. Yeah, it, I feel like when you have a lot of the same meta threats on a team and you face... Or you're stuck either facing other meta teams and it's more or less a skill matchup and they're like predictions, like you say. Or you're facing somebody who's got a, a team crafted to beat the meta and it's just going to be really tough the whole time. That's why I'm not a huge fan of them. Like I, I barely cracked a 50-50 win rate by the end of my uh, meta team day. Or no, I think I went 5-3 in the end, but it was still 
still kind of tough. Yeah, now that I have a fire too, I can threaten your Chimurian a lot more than yesterday. I think you had the edge yesterday on me. <laughs> Working on a new team is hard. Yeah, I, I kind of out of good team ideas. Like this team now is just a variation of a older team concept I've brought back. But it still works pretty solid. Actually, how many times does it even have from the original version? Is it? I think it's just Obi Platymus. And Gario, yeah. It's just nice because both Obi and Platymus double in with the Sparks core. So then you basically have these five, which are pretty solid. Maybe minus Tort Knight because of the Akronox issue I was mentioning. Gario is nice in combo with Obi and has type coverage that the team needs. It's really good against fires that it's weak to, and yeah. Have plenty of counters to water. They're pretty good against nature too. Da, da, no. The other thing Volfi adds is a, another center typer partner. Um, is Chromia doesn't have priority. At least nature Chromia doesn't have priority without a harmful microwave partner. I know lots of the other Chromion types do have Pryo, especially after the Chromion changes in 1.5. Stuff like Earth Chromion has Sludge Gift, Fire has Fire Flame, Water has Water Blade. Giving Water Chromion Water Blade seems like overkill, but it is probably like a decent decision considering how bad of a type chart Water Chromion has. Curious if Allie's still running it. Wonder if we'll face her at some point. I don't think she plays much during this time. Usually it's just later. Actually, getting some encounters done on this Pookie radar. I've been on the same radar for like all this week and part of last week. Yeah, I was hardly getting through any of it because <laughs> we kept finding matches right away, which is nice in its own right. But at the same time, like it would be really nice to get the Umbra. So, because everyone always asks me, "Oh, where's your Umbra?" So it's like I have like I can't I can't get it any faster. I mean, I could I could get it off stream and I just writers feel like. A waste of time for the most part. Unless there's something really good to watch. Just have it in the background running. <sighs> Lila. Lila? One of the two. I actually like that hairstyle. I'm not sure if that's new or if it's... If I missed it or something. Not for me, but it's just... It's a nice one. It's kind of a really fast team here. Quad electric weakness, but the Ragnet to supplement it. There's two pure water types. And then, like, there's the random Mimits. I have to assume it's a striking Mimic, because I don't see any exactly beneficial landing combos. And also... Also, is a pretty mixed team, because you have physical, special, special, physical, 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 special. So you can't invest super well on one side of that. I 
going to ban the Hazrak because that's... It looks like it's holding the team together with synergies because the Lava Wave with the two waters and the Hellfire with the the Hedgen. It's also pretty pretty good against me. It is another to Toxic that walls Tort Knight, which sucks. Um, but also I don't want to have to deal with it with my Chromion and such. Even though I do have like two Earths now, now Gario and Volfi. See you, comma. No random spread partners. So it seems like an odd choice. I was looking to see if there was any reason not to go Obi Chromion. Because I can just throw sparks on the Chromion and then. Okay, I cannot do that anymore. Probably gonna be a thing where I swap in Gario if I can. Turn one to get the Tesla prison on Hedgen. Or maybe even the Tesla prison on Ukama if it doesn't have camel. I mean, Platinumus is also a really good swap. I'm just going to get rid of Alhi because it beats my Toxics. I, I'd like to play. Pla Alright, it beats both my waters. It hits Platymus with wind moves and Gario with melee moves. Also hits Volfi on Tortonite. He bans the Magma anyways. Interesting. I still like Gario turn one. Platymus is also good. So why not pick both? Gario matchup into Mashuk isn't that bad, because I can still Soil Steam pick on Mashuk's typically weaker special defense. So unless they're heavily de invested defensively, it'll still hurt him real hard. I'm looking at picking up uh, Volfi in the last last slot as well. I'm really confused by the, the Magmut ban, because there's double water possibility and hedging. Yeah, like, Magma wasn't doing anything this game. Wolfie, super valuable. Do I need either of my Thames on lead? I guess Nature Chromion would be nice to keep alive for... From a Shook. Go to Tesla Prison with the Hedgen, and we'll swap in the Gario for the target rep. I feel like I can swap freely because there's no marbles. It feels wonderful. So many people just pick their marbles Tem on lead no matter what. The split. That's unfortunate. Like, yes, I, I could have targeted the Ukama there, but I was mainly Tesla prisoning for the the speed drop, is the thing. And Ukama wipes that with Camo if it swaps out. Camo resets all of your stat changes upon swap in. If anyone didn't know. So there's no point in a raid bossing a chamomile tome. I'll throw a Tesla at Ukama now. And then a Rockfall. Okay. A little surprised Tejan stayed in. And that is a fairly fast Ukama, which is good to know.
Binary did seize my gravel bag, so I would not have been able to use soil steam effectively. At that health, it would have still killed. But it would not have been comfortable. We're more than likely going to see the Mashuk come in here, because Gario can't really hit Mashuk without gravel bag. I'd like to pick on Ukama a little bit. So we're going to just bring in Platymus. Okay, the Mashuk has marbles. Wonderful. No more free swaps. I'm going to throw a water jet. Just for some whatever chip, because who cares? <laughs> it's more of a thing where uh, Platymus will hopefully kill Ukama. If it doesn't, it'll the little extra chip should finish it. Not too afraid about Ragnet because I've got Volfi. And if Ragnet takes a little bit of chip, I can just finish it with Sludge Gift. I'm just trying to try and take out the Gario. That's pretty low health. I'm not sure if I can live the uppercut. Okay. So he's trying to take out the Plotimus because he doesn't have any great answers to it. Yep, good thing I doubled in with the Ukama. The problem is because I used a low prior move, I did get a good judge of this Mashuk's speed. It would have to be significantly fast in order to actually pressure me here. I am expecting to just see Ragnet and a helicopter kick. If he's got it. Because that would finish off the Gario and break the evasion from my Platymus. Which would be bad. But if there's no helicopter kick, then I just Toxin Shower and it's fine. Because either Gario gets a. I guess I kind of just save Gario anyways, don't I? Or Platymus, that is. Mm, it's really, really tough. Platymus would be nice against Oshiara, because Oshiara can't even touch Platymus. He has helicopter kick, but he's fast. I got a really, really fast Mashuk. Because this Platymus is 273. Just Aquatic and Plague now. Oh. He swaps in Oshiara and kills Platymus. Then he just Water Blades upper or Water Blade Waste Waters the Chromion and it dies, and I really have nothing I can do. It is going to be a Tireless Mashuk, so it'll start getting its attack boost after this turn. I 
for the Wolfie though. That's actually smart, yeah. Because he outspeeds my Plotimus anyways. Yeah, this this random max speed Mashook is just going to make me lose the game. I got nothing against it. If I knew it was max speed, I, I would have made much different plays. I was assuming that I could just outspeed the, the thing at some point and get my advantage. But I needed Pryo to kill it. Like, this thing dies to one special. Like, I definitely would have saved Obi had I known that. That's just so weird. Mashuk has really bad special defense. But I think that thing was like max speed, max attack. With almost no defensive invest whatsoever. So, uh, and with all the winds around, it just seems so risky. You're probably putting yourself in range to almost die to a wind burst if you do that. GG's regardless. You probably die like maybe Mashuk naturally lives a feather gatling because it's got really high base defense. But if you have to swap out every time there's a token on the board, that feels so bad. I also don't know what its third move was. It had Helicopter Kick, Uppercut, and Wastewater, though. So it was either dropping either Turbo or Perfect Jab. Neither are really moves you want to drop. So, really unfortunate. Playing aggro these days, every game's a heart attack. One wrong play and they punish you a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely how it goes with aggro. Obi man. If I ban Platinus, I'm a bit more free to pick Magma. It sucks I keep getting blue sight against the Shell Ants. Shell Ants has such a such a big advantage when it's on blue side, because you just pick it now and then I pick my lead in whatever you want to pick with with the shell ant, you just do it. Like if I pick Magma now, he can just go Adora Boros. Okay. That's not what I was expecting. I pick Magma here, but what do I want to pick with it? The best thing to threaten out stuff next to Magma is Amphitere. I'm gonna ban the Adoro now. Do not want to have to deal with that thing. Not on a heavy special team like mine. Only physical attack I have is Gario, which is practically walled by it still. Tolkien's gonna be a pain to deal with. I do have Gario at least.
magma can take a soil steam. Even if it's just a trade of magma for Akronox, I'd be okay with that. Shellant is not super speedy. Akronox, however, is super speedy. I guess it fits its name. Am I enjoying it? I love this team. This team's fun. I wouldn't consider this typical aggro, though. This one's more trying to make use of evasion and sparks. I don't have max speed on, on a lot of stuff. It's more just a mid-range variation. I want to save Gary to deal with the Tolkien. Romeo would be nice to save for the Volfi, but also deals with the Shell Ant. I think I just Bright Beam and throw a Magma Cannon. Oh, I did mock. Not a move you see often anymore. So he actually does not have Inner Spirit. Or, or, or he, he doesn't have Kessel, one or the other. Because he showed Haito. So he's got Soul Shout, Haito. Okay, it's Drill Garunder. Man, that's so be it. Why? Why don't they just reveal the gears like they're supposed to? That literally ruins everything. If a shell lands faster than my Volfi now, I just kind of lose. I think it's really slow, though. Wow, that's a bulky Tolkien. I even had the center typer bonus there. Uh, if Volfi gets burned, it won't actually kill here, which is going to be kind of sad. He was just baiting in the the group. And then there's the drill to break through Gario's evasion as well. Which is just really lame. I don't know, this game would have gone so much differently had I just known it was drill. And he's faster. Uh, feels like drills becoming. The problem isn't that drills being run. The problem is I don't know drills there. Why would like Garunder can be put to sleep if if it doesn't have drill, which is huge. Like, Garunder is super slow. It, it's really vulnerable to control tactics.
He also has a, a Volfi that's, that's faster than mine, which sucks too. There's just no point in playing the rest of that out. His Droger under... He, he literally just drilled through my team three times. Yeah, I know. There, there is a lot of evasion in the meta. It makes sense to be run. The problem is that there's a bug, because those types of gears are supposed to be revealed right now, and they aren't. And even so, it's an item that either gives you insane value or is none at all. Because if I, instead of having an evasion troll, an invasion control team, and I have a sleep control team, that grinder does nothing. Because it's just putting, getting put to sleep the entire time. Yeah, look, you can see it. Oh, the Pookie's blocking it. In the reflection, there, there's like a glitched player in the air or something. <laughs> yeah, it's just people. I don't. I'm actually surprised more people aren't running sleep control. Like, I feel like Deluge teams would be pretty strong right now. Was max speed Magma fairing? It's pretty good. Problem is that there's a lot of people running even more speed than that. Like, that... That was a pretty fast Akronox we just faced. We faced a Shell Ant with Dimmok. Hello, Shakalako. Welcome. If you're new to competitive, you saw my videos on YouTube. Create the teams. I create every single team on my channel, yes. I always have a team build building session at the start of my videos. So yeah, it's, it's not like the, there's a place where you can go to find meta tier teams. I, I posted the two just the other day uh, that were... Pro that's really just what you're going to run if you're playing meta for the most part with minor edits. Uh, so I, if you're looking for that type of team, I would just go with one of those two. There's the faster or the, the bulkier version for you. Oh, the Walt. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, you, you see all people play the same. Is that normal? Uh, it, it's pretty common for a lot of people to run the same stuff. Like, th there's objectively better Thames for all, in a lot of things in this game. Once a meta is established, there's an anti-meta, so you're able to kind of counter the main stuff. But stuff like Tolkien, Platymus, Volfi, even Oshiara Hazrat just gives so much value right now, you're going to see those on most every single meta team. How's it going? Going pretty well. Uh, that last match was a bit rough. I'm hoping they get these bugs fixed real soon, but you never know when it's going to get done. I'd rather it be a good patch that doesn't introduce any new bugs than fix all the bugs sooner that exist currently. I'm going to ban the Volarend. Freeze up my Toxics a little bit to deal with Tyranek. At least they postponed TMCS. No one deserves to play with the bugs. Yeah. I'm just glad they're giving us enough time. But it's like they haven't announced when the patch is actually going to be. And it'll still be nice to play with a f like how the meta is going to be once we see a fixed Galios. If it's going to change or, or anything at all. Hello, Light Cube. Welcome.
Okay. Not often you see Minotaur picked anymore. There's so many Earths and Crystals around, and just special Thames in general. It, I feel like it goes unused more often than not. Must be a frightening Tyranak. Otherwise, he doesn't get Rusher here. Or maybe he's just bringing in for the free swap in, swap out. You know, if if Tortnite gets got banned, Inky would have been a big problem because Volfi was banned before. And I'm probably going to be losing a lot of health on Magmut here on whatever it does in the lead. Also, I don't think I've gotten blue side once today. I feel like I hardly ever get it anymore. It is Intimidator. Alright. Kind of weird, but that's fine. I was going to double in on the Minotaur. Honestly, I'd, I'm okay with Amphitur eating uh, an Embers. Hey, Steel Lunch hurts because I'm not bulky on Magma. A sharp leaf predicting his swaps or maybe he doesn't even have embers on his tyranac maybe he went opposite for a sharp leaf instead I like to think that after the minus one speed, my magma can outspeed the Minotaur. Then I can get a Bright Beam off an Amphitur so I don't have to eat the Meteor Swarm. Kind of sucks I'm facing a physical lead when I went for Spec Gulp on the Magma, but that's okay. I wonder what he's swapping into. This Volfi? Okay. I don't know how well I take a sludge gift. Probably not that great. Especially after the little bit of chip here from the Meteor Swarm. Not a chance. I can try and get a fire soul off if it's a slower evolve for you. Infantier's kind of just got to die, though. Because Tyranax just got a flaming meteorite coming this way. Feynman, hello, welcome. Ah, it went for Dust Vortex. I could have gone for Soul Shout, taking the risk. I didn't think there was any reason not to sludge gift there. I 
Mm, double fire is worse for me than I thought. I didn't want to bring Gario against double water. Which was my thought process. Uh, he's talking about other people he faces on ladder, I believe. Everyone's running the same teams. Not me. Because, yeah, I run very unique teams. Yeah, I just lose. I I guess I gotta look at banning Tyranak. It's definitely a much larger problem for me than I gave it credit for. Not really sure what that swap was for. Why is Wolfie still the way it is? Couldn't tell ya. Couldn't tell ya. Krema has favorites. <laughs> I suppose that is about the only possibility. Man, why you gotta do that? <laughs> At least let me pretend I can win. Potentially, if he ignores the Tort Knight here and my Chromian gets the hologram off, maybe. Because his Minotaur dies, and so does Titanac, and pretty much whatever Tort Knight's got. Ah. Looks like he, he figured that out. <laughs> Yeah, GG. Too weak to fires. I banned the Volar in that game because it has the potential of being a special tank. It also walls like three of my Thames. The more I'm playing this team, the less, the more I'm realizing I'm actually not getting any value out of target rip. Whether it's from drill, or me not being able to click evasion moves because people are faster, or people just banning the OB, it just isn't working. It's, like it, it's fun to... To run something like an OB Gario lead. But nowadays, people basically have an equivalent with just Shell Ant. Let's bring Shell Ant plus whatever and it protects it rather than only being able to protect OB.
Plus, Gario's just not in the best spot right now. Because he gets walled by natures and waters, two of the most common types in the game. As toxic as wind are more common, I guess, but... I don't know. Maybe this just isn't the team. I'd probably be better off going back to a mid-range with Broccoli, Broccoli and Grumper. I think those two are still really solid. And they performed super well last patch. Just trying to expand upon their abilities. Brocklum's another one that beats the... The Inky Shell Knight combo. I don't. I think the reason Grumper didn't work on this team yesterday is it's just a different, different pacing, different kind of game plan almost. Because this team wants to be faster and get kills, but it's, 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 but I'm just, I'm still getting outsped. Because I'm not investing fully in speed, so that I'm actually able to take a hit. But so many people actually are stacking their offensive stats to have more bulk and speed. Because they can get away with it. I think there's value in... Yeah, maybe I'll bring back a team with Grumper and Broccolin tomorrow. See what I can do. Won't be super exciting because I'm using kind of the, some of the same Thames as last patch, but. I might just have to be what it is. Fourth move would I run on Electric Chromion aside from Harmful Binary Thunderstrike? Um, DC Beam gives it priority, which, is, which can be nice if you're not pairing it with another Electric. For harmful microwave synergy. Hologram's good for fast if you just need Chromium to survive a hit, but honestly I don't click it that often. Most of the time you want to be clicking damage on your Chromion. Uh, Tesla Prison's another option. Really good for punishing swaps. Because even if they swap in like a Volfi, if you get a Tesla Prison on it, and it's a you might be able to outspeed a Sludge Gift. Or something can be useful. So I'd say either DC Beam or Tesla for the most part. I think double water, double earth would have a better time against fires, but I guess Gary just throws a wrench in that plan. Right, not a fan of the guys. I have a lot of priority. I know I have a couple rotten goo users, but rotten goo out doesn't even one shot the guys, so it's rough. Need a second chip, and if the guys is faster than my electric suit. So can get damage off before I can Tesla it. Also, it can just swap. <laughs> oh, not the magma. Come on. <laughs> uh, seems like everyone's just kind of accepting a fire weakness just because... There's just not enough good fires in the game. Could it be that this Orphil is evil? 
I like Orphil. Orphil's cool. I know it's a slower one, though. I think he's using Shreen's Horn on it, though, so I gotta watch out. Yeah, level always a bit of a pain for me too. This team's just got so many weaknesses. Ban that Momo now. Naturally has higher special defense, so it kind of walls my team. I pick Volfi and Platinumus as my last two slots. Gary into double nature's always rough. My Amphitheer shouldn't die to any one hit from Valash. If it's a physical Valash with Crystal Bite, that might be interesting. I'm not sure how bulky or speedy the Lawali is. Um, oh, it's gonna be a madness buff Valash, you serious? Oh well. <laughs> oh wait, no, why do you even have Kaleidoscope on Lawali? Like, what are you gonna do? Maybe he'll, like. No. Oh. So it's got to be backhanded. But Lawali doesn't have any, like, turn one status moves that are viable. So I can't think of any reason you would run it. That's one. Forgot about Nimble. Kind of funny more than anything, though. It is physical. I don't know how fast the Valash is, even after the Nimble. It I guess it outsped my Amphitheer, so it's pretty fast. We'll throw a Plague. Make it OX. Oh, it's War Drum. I'm like, I thought I coked to live like any Crystal Bite. Oh, Scavenger. Okay, yeah, that's actually a bigger issue than I thought it was going to be.
he wanted me to bring in Volfi so he could destroy it with Orphil. Wow, okay. I could have used Aqua on the Valash, but it's just going to heal right back up anyways. So I thought I'd take the risk in case he double tort that I'd be able to get the Rotten Goo off. Yeah, Nature Chromian's not doing anything this game. He's just staying in on Valash. Bulky move flank. Good to know. I think Toxic Gas still OXs me, which sucks. Yeah, it does. Dang it. I'm going to predict he'll swap back into Orphil in the Valash slot. No, he stayed in! Uh, that's another nimble. I really don't think your Valash needs to be any faster, but that's okay. As long as the Crystal Dust kills, we're good. Alright. Hologram just to see if I can buy a turn. Oh, I was hoping after the marbles chip the crystal spikes would kill. But there's some defense invest in that inky. It's not full speed, full special attack. And it actually sucks I live there. Dang it. It's going to be a matter of can my Volfi outspeed his Orphil to get a Dust Vortex, which it no longer can, because the Inky has Tesla Prison. I respect the creativeness of this team. But this sucks. <laughs> I mean, there's there's four fire weeks. There, there there's Valash, Lawali, or Phil Inky, so it just kind of insta loses to more than zero fire types. Oh, he does outspeed anyways.
Yeah. Uh, that was the game. GG's. Very interesting. Aside from Token Hazard, what other fires are, are really seeing play? Hedgen. Hedgen still sees play. Tolkien Hazrat are like super popular, so it's not like you can just ignore them. Like one of the teams I made for the meta is just like here. There's double fire. You just kind of forfeit on those. I wouldn't want to. Uh, other fires. Yeah, I guess it's not super common, really. It's just Tyranax still popular enough. It definitely still sees play. Scarable's not common, but you do run into it on occasion. If it really counts as a fire. Well, I'll just try like one more time. What? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit exhausted today. I'll probably just call it after this one. Have a shorter stream. A bit too much jank I'm going up against today. And this team just isn't feeling good to play right now. I'm not sure if it's just a Magmut Volfi or... I'm probably just going to try and switch stuff up tomorrow entirely. If I stream tomorrow. I actually have a couple exams coming up for midterms. So. Might take a little bit of a break. Like this weekend or something. Well, I'll just have to see. Subaki. Alright. Pretty sure that's a special wall magma, so I'm just gonna get rid of it right away. Spec gulp charcoal wall. Pick my fire type because he's pretty weak to fire. A lot of people have so many umbras from selling a lot of Luma to radar or what? So what typically happens? So if you're the original tamer of a Temtem, you train it up to perfect to give enough hot fixes to use it in showdown. You can actually continue using that perfect Luma in showdown. Even if you, like, trade it in for Luma Drops. Same thing goes for the Umbras. Once you get an Umbra and train it up to max TVs, you can use that Umbra and Showdown forever. And you can just throw get more uh, Luma Drops from turning in the Umbras because it actually gives a significant amount. I'm not sure if that's going to get changed at some point, so I'm not risking it at the moment, but that's what how a lot of people are doing it. Like, you get a 5% like Yowler, and it gives like 5,000 Luma Drops for the Umbra. So if you can get it within like three radars or something, you end up net positive, and then you can just kind of keep chaining your Umbras. Eventually you're going to run out, but I know a couple top players are actually getting rid of their perfect Lumas even, just so that they don't have to buy any things off the auction house, and it's just kind of get them. It's actually really interesting. He's actually not running a Cowron on this team. That's really surprising. I feel like Cowron just gives so much value, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe I was wrong all along. Okay, actually blend his Luma Volgon. Saw it on Discord. Um... I think Yaw posted a video where he grinded something. If not, it was somebody who was just checking how many Luma drops it would be for a mythical. But nobody actually did it as far as I'm aware. That would just be troll. It's the best rat, fast, bulky, fast attacker, or bulky attacker. Which rat are you talking about? Are you talking about Volfi or Hazrat? Because I refer to both as rats, even though technically Volfi's like a desert fox something. 
To me, it's still a rat. How's rat? Um, I think typically people are going fast and bulky and just... It has type advantage from a lot of boards, and people just try and take advantage of that. And then you get like a heat up off on a positive board to supplement your attack. Not that you go zero attack, you probably go maybe like 500 TVs in bulk. Enough so you can probably live a tornado or something. Bulk and attacker enjoyer. Didn't you used to be bulk speed with like embers and stuff? I mean, Hazrat's pretty flexible with being able to build anywhere between the three and still get value. They have... To they have to be perfect if you want to use them on showdown. You have to already be able to use them in showdown if you're grinding them. So it has to be a complete perfect Luma. Or Umbra. But the Umbras come perfect. It's just you need to put the TVs in them. <sighs> you play bulky and fast with some attack, but feel like you don't do any damage before you get heat up off. Well, if... I mean, it's... It's going to depend on your team a lot, too. If you're running a fast, high offense team, and you're trying to double in to get kills, and then Hazard just kind of tickles them, that's probably not to play. If you're running a slower, bulkier team, then you probably don't even need that much speed. And if something feels bad, I'd just try something else instead. <laughs> I know when I was running Hazard, I hit like 232 speed and like max attack and rest in HP. You could do something along those lines a little bit. Hazard, you're using your target rep team. I don't remember that exact build. Oh, double ended the magnet. Sad. She did a lot of damage. I know I'm a squishy magma, but I feel like... It sparks myself. More value than trying to do anything to this Yowler right now. Probably expected to show off for a Madness buff. I debated on putting Madness buff. But I... I don't know. I, I don't like Madness buff as a move. It feels like it rarely ever gets value. I think the only time it gets value is on a scavenger of a lash that's really fast. And even then, you need the right scenario for it. I mean, Xenerith. Xenerith's another term that can use it, because you can put a slat to sleep with Crystal Deluge. Still not a move you click off, and maybe once every 20, 25 games or so. Just the health loss is too severe, and only getting plus three in each feels bad. M buff Naga Wen. I know somebody in the main Discord who would love to agree with you. No! You gotta be joking. Fiery Soul sucks. Such a bad move. Plus four, plus four, minus buff win. Yeah, I almost think we could go back to that. Brings in Mom and some really gonna regret bringing in Volfi. 
Two vine hurts the squad a lot. Well, I can hurt the two vine a lot, so that's okay. Mom's lunch. We'll just chip the Elder a little bit and then Bright Beam. I am surprised he stayed in. I could have hurt this Piranha really bad. Using Tesla Prison just in case he swaps in moments. I feel like he's going too soon. Is Nupar infinite now? Yes, it is infinite. I can't believe he's staying in with this Baranian. It's just crazy to me. Nerfed it for mid range, buffed it for stall, yeah. Ooh, beef up. Now that I did not respect. Maybe he'd. I guess he swapped off of the Marbles Ultrasound Piranient and went to a beef. Beef up, probably revitalize as well. If he swaps now, I'm gonna be so sad. I have enough special attack where I can hit two vine pretty hard. Ah, dang! I could have bright beamed, and that would have actually killed it off at this health. I didn't know how much my plague would do since it was unboosted. Rather than Bright Beam, I'd actually rather just get one last Tesla Prison off. I really, uh, I should have swapped out Volfi for Obi. Get the hold off of reset, so I can threaten, uh, threaten that on the Yowler. Plus three Tesla does nothing against that moment. So I'm like a max special attack Amphitheater too. And now I wish I had used Plague on the Owler to exhaust it. And Bright Beam to survive this turn on Amphitheer. Why did he not just Plasma Clinch? That just guarantees the kill on Amphitheer. That's correct. That's a really strange choice. Want to punish the Obi swap? Yeah. yeah. I'm still okay though. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my two vine options are kind of just going down the drain now. I really wanted Volfi alive for that.
Yeah, this is just GG. Yeah, the turn where I just sacked the Amphitheater for no reason. And lost all that health on Volfi. I, I could have made the Yowler OX from that last Savage. Had I just plagued it. That would have given me a free turn to do whatever. Also not respecting the Piranian either. I should have killed that like two or three turns earlier. I feel like for stall you gotta play different. Matchup is rare now, it's easy to get thrown off guard. Well, I'm, I'm trying to plan a few turns ahead, but he's still not giving me any space to do anything. Because like, you gotta basically make hard reads every single turn against Stall. Because had had he swapped two Mama into any of the turns when I doubled Piranha with two Plagues, he would have got a free swap in on Mama and I wouldn't have been able to do anything. And Plague is not a cheap move to click, like 31 stamina. I could only make that mistake once. Yeah, game's over. He didn't even hibernate once on his Yowler. Didn't have to. Sparks and reset, I can't even beat Stall anymore. He didn't even get one buff off. He's basically just playing bulky offense at this point. Oh, he, got, he got Fluid Barrier and, and beef up. That's about it. Two Vine's not even a stall to him. I don't know where all those Galios teams went, but I wish they'd come back. That's <laughs> what you gotta do against Reset. Diamond Ford OP. <laughs> OP is not the word I would use. Also, that that like that two vine has very little defensive invest. It's probably just got the natural 500 HP, and that's probably about it. Sabaki's so played two vine stall a lot in the past with Diamond for it. Oh. Yeah, I guess maybe I should. You know, where's Razo when you need him to start running multiple fire teams? Problem is, every team has, like, two two waters, Oshiara, Platymus, and two worse, Turok, and Volfi. And then four things weak to fire or something, because they can get away with it. Because fires just suck. You got, like, Hazrat Tolkien, you just ban one of the two, and then you just take the loss. You try to play three fire teams, it's not very fast. Yeah, it, people have adequate counters. It would be it would be so nice if I could run a fire where its primary move wasn't fiery soul, <laughs> and its other moves weren't garbage. Because like Quetzal without synergy sucks, and I don't want to have to play on a fire neutral board. You ban Hazard and have a lot of ways to wreck Tolkien. Nobody respects other fires enough. Well, I mean, no other fire really fits. I, like, I was trying trying magma for fun, and it just feels bad all around. Like, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's a bit different, but it still just sucks. Could try Kapire on a team again. Maybe even like build a Raikin team. Quits without synergy is decent. It's just it's it doesn't compare to other turn ones though. It's you're still using a weaker move than some like soil steam. I guess it's still better than beta burst and crystal spikes, which I don't know. Yeah. 
if my maybe Raiken is the play. I don't know. I'll have to do some thinking. You know, next time I stream, I'll probably have a, a new team. Start with Broccolum Grumper and throw at least one Quetzal user on there. And yeah, I, I, I didn't miss your question, Gritting, but... I mean, there, there's a couple other like resource videos on YouTube. It depends on like where you want to start. I know... Bloon Kenogi or whatever has like a TV training guide. That's a good one. Everyone uses as far as I'm aware <laughs> to start out. I guess sweatbands kind of changed around a bit, but for the most part, stamina hasn't been touched. I have a very vague and kind of mediocre team building guide. And then there's like the the East decks or something in the pins of the competitive questions channel you were recommended. That one gives you an idea of kind of like a Tem's primary trait it wants to use, a very general game plan, and some of its recommended moves. It's a good resource for new players for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty burnt out today, so I'm gonna, gonna call it a bit early. But thank you all for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll just I'll I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.